112th Contact, Wednesday, July 19, 1978. 10.03 p.m. Block 3, pages 189, 194. Billy says you've come rather late today, when I consider that last time, it was during the day. Quetzal says it just so happened because we first had to rework all the facts thoroughly. Accordingly, the things are now clear, and we've reached the following conclusion. In reference to your person and in respect of the fact that you are no longer willing to bear the leadership of the group. There isn't any possibility or prospect that someone can be found in your group, neither at present nor in the foreseeable future, who could take over the leadership of the group with all its concerns in steadily occurring form and fulfill everything to satisfaction. On the one hand, this is based in the lack of the necessary knowledge but, on the other hand, also in the lack of understanding. Add to that the fact that no person of the group is educated and developed in the manual interests so far that he could boast in all occurring manual activities. Professional knowledge in the largest measure, as it is necessary for the building up and preservation of the center, is not available with the group members, whereby the various occurring works of a manual nature can no longer be carried out under your instruction due to your stepping aside. In an organizational sense, also the driving force of the organization falls as a result of your stepping aside, as well as the far-sighted overview of everything, so even in terms of the occurring works to be done. At present, there is, unfortunately, no one in the group who can exhibit these qualities even only approximately. Indeed, varying opinions prevail with various ones that this isn't very bad and that everything can, indeed, be accomplished with goodwill. But they cannot recognize their self-deception, and they judge everything as too easy, which is why they also don't have very deep thoughts about your stepping aside and are of the opinion that everything is easier to cope with and handle than it looks. Their self-deception will, therefore, place them before very serious problems, which will already appear quite soon. But now to the core of these concerns it wasn't possible for us, by any means, to find a sufficiently educated replacement for you, as I already explained because such would have to arise from the group itself. But finding a suitable person outside of the group is just as illusory as our desire that you should continue to maintain the leadership, if everything still shouldn't get worse than before. But it has become clear to us that you do not want to undo your will anymore. On the other hand, it would also be extremely inadvisable to recommend someone from outside of the group to you because this would lead within a short time to the complete destruction of the group and all its interests and efforts. For these reasons, we have reached the resolution that the only way that remains open for the continued existence of the group and the task is that the whole group takes over the task of the management, which won't be easy for it, however, which it will soon see. That is our advice and it's the only possible advice that we can give. Billy says that's about what I also thought myself, when I let everything go through my head again today but one didn't want to have it any other way. It will now just be the case that for certain works to be done, specialists will have to be requisitioned and expensively paid. But now, it will also even be the case that everyone must think about the building up and continued existence of the center themselves, but also in respect of all works to be done, etc., etc., because I will no longer interfere in any matters of this kind, not even in an advisory manner. I'm just sick and tired of it. But on the other hand, I finally want to be myself again, which you evidently understand. Also, I expressly explained that I will only remain in the center and continue to work for the mission if I don't need to bear the leadership of all things anymore, which means that I don't want to have to deal with any issues of the group anymore. Only for absolutely private concerns can I still hold myself responsible, but not for anything else anymore. All group matters and all matters surrounding the distribution of the writings no longer concern me at all. So from now on, I will also pay a monthly rent for the apartment, which is also certainly irrevocable for me. Should this not be accepted, however, then no places to stay in the center remain for me anymore. Semyaza says but you cannot do that, however. 
you live with your family on only a very small pension. Moreover, compensations are entitled to you for your works because every work is worth its wages, as you yourselves say. To my knowledge, it was also decided in your group that in each case, you are to receive 50% of all proceeds for your and your family's upkeep, but this, in my judgment, does not in the least outweigh the worth of your work. Billy says now listen, girl I said clearly and plainly that I'm laying down the leadership and will have nothing more to do with the group. Only on a purely private basis am I responsible for the group members. This, then, also means for me that I stand in subtenancy with the group and, therefore, have to pay a rental fee, which, admittedly, the group has to determine. I will not and cannot live in the center for free, otherwise I would actually have to move away from there. What that would mean, however, you know very well. Quetzal says I find your decision not of correctness, but I must, indeed, accept it, just like all the others. But nevertheless, I would like to tell you the following you have applied all your strength for the welfare and prosperity of the group and all of its interests. But their thanks for it were irrationality and often, even very often, only very deficient efforts in the areas of evolution, which led to the fact that you simply cannot continue any more and that you lay down the management. The group members should still truly consider what was given to them by you and what should still be given further which is why they should remunerate you fairly. It would now truly be unfair if you would yet pay a fee for your right of residence. As Semiars are already explained, you are entitled to a certain remuneration, which has been awarded to you by the sale of the writings, and you should take this for yourself. Billy says but I said clearly and plainly that I will have nothing more to do with the group. This means for me that I pay my house rent and that I accept absolutely nothing for a remuneration, as you say this. What I need for material and possibly still for postage, as well as for typewriter repairs and so on and so forth, from now on, I will fork this out of my own pocket, as I have always partially done so up to now. I will only do my work regarding the mission in the sense that I'll write everything down in such a way as you or any levels transmit it to me. But that's it. I'll hand over what is written to the group, and what it then makes of it, that is no longer my problem. For group concerns themselves, I am in no way responsible anymore. And the reproduction and dissemination of the writings, etc., this, as was already said, is also the task of the group. In this respect, I now no longer hold myself exactly to the letter. Quetzal says this will impact the group members very hard, and whether they will get along with this, that is a very big question. Billy says one didn't want it differently, and now, I cannot help any more. Quetzal says thus, we will have to work out a lot of things in the near future, which you will then have to hand over to the group. These will be regulations and rules that, unfortunately, become unavoidable through this. But at the same time, this also means that a decision and resolution made by us today enters into force, which is that we can give the group one last chance, which we limit to six months. If, by then, up to the last day of the month of February, 1979, everything hasn't fundamentally changed the good and better in the form of our regulations, in terms of the overall task fulfillment, then we will withdraw ourselves and no longer concern ourselves with the task which relates to you earth human beings. This would then also mean that all storages in the Sahar Center would be completely eliminated and no real successes could be produced there anymore. Accordingly, it is now up to the group and the individual members to reflect at last and to address all things, as these are necessary. Billy says that will cause new riot, my friend. Quetzal says that isn't likely, on the other hand, new arrangements are inevitable. But I know what your comment refers to, because you thinking of last weekend, for your words have been confirmed. Billy says exactly, I did, indeed, tell you that a dictatorship and slavery would be spoken of because it just doesn't want to be understood that regulations of this kind are something completely different and, in addition, are not commands. 
Semyaza says the thought forms of the earth human beings are simply incomprehensible to me. How can a thinking human being be so unreasonable and self-centered? Billy says you ask me too much, my child. I also don't understand it. Quetzal says it is also incomprehensible to me, but even more so the anti-natural sense that the earth human beings constantly excuse themselves for their own wrongdoings, namely that they imagine themselves to be unable to change anything in and of themselves overnight. Over and over again, I must make the finding, during occasional inspections, that many, even group members, are of the opinion that it can't be expected of them that they would have to make a change to the better in a quick form because they are still in such dire need of knowledge and are not so advanced in their overall evolution that they could do this. But that is, in truth, not the case, as you yourself know very well from your own experience. Only the will to be developed forms the basis for rapid actions toward producing and making an appropriate change and transformation in a very short time. But as long as the group members are still of this erroneous and incomprehensible opinion, that they are entitled to a right to changes and transformations in the long run because their overall evolution still leaves much to be desired, they also won't achieve any significant successes. They can only acquire and attain successes if they finally realize that they must bear the full responsibility for each of their actions themselves and have to be responsible for each change and transformation in themselves. And only if they are able to recognize this, if they finally strive for reflection and consideration and give up their selfishness and their constant self-pity, only then will they realize that it is in no way too much to ask for them to seek in the shortest time, to make changes and transformations in themselves, in their thoughts and actions, and to strive for and achieve these quickly. That would be what I had to say today. It hardly needs any other remarks. Only for you, my friend, do I still have to give the following advice for your health, it would be of utility if you would let a doctor prescribe you some medications, for I wasn't able to eliminate all illness factors for you according to which you are, therefore, not yet at full health again, as you yourself can determine. Unfortunately, it isn't possible for me to do more toward remedying the illness for you because your body wouldn't cope with this. Thus, I must leave it at what I could do for you on Monday. Meanwhile, you still stand under the numbing of your nerve centers, which makes you tired and drowsy. But nevertheless, I must burden you with work, so namely with the transmission of the contact reports, so that these don't become forgotten or simply neglected. On the other hand, it would make a lot of work for you later, if you had to write several reports after the fact. Therefore, my friend, I will transmit the first reports of the last two contacts to you tonight and then transmit the one of today to you tomorrow evening between 8.00 p.m. and 8.45 p.m. Billy says that is fine for me, Quetzal. Quetzal says unfortunately, it cannot be changed that you will be very tired and will have some difficulties with the writing. But you'll do it, for I am certainly not mistaken about your will, which still works very distinctively. Billy says you could be right about that, for despite my listlessness and tiredness, I have a completely clear head. Quetzal says of course, for only your nerve centers are exhausted, but not your consciousness. But now, my friend, everything would be discussed for today. Unless you still have a question. If not, then we will go now. Billy says no, as far as ah, wait, yes how is it with you do you actually dance too? I mean like with us, men and women together, etc. Semyaza says such rhythmic movements are well known to us, and the earth human beings have also taken this over from our ancestors. These rhythmic movements are, to my knowledge, known among all human forms in the universe, only in very different forms. But the rule is that male life forms among us do not indulge in such rhythmic movements together with female life forms but only alone or among their peers. In contrast to the animal world, the sense for rhythmic movements among human life forms is pronounced with the female life form, 
while the male life form often appropriates this out of pure egoism and out of expediency even though his movements of this kind are often very unesthetic and almost foreign to nature. But the 